Hi guys. Okay, I'm working on a painting that I've started, obviously, uh, and I'm pretty long, pretty far along. So I will be demonstrating, um, you know, a little bit on a side piece of Bristol board because this is all out of focus water. There's the reference picture. I'm using Createx illustration colors. I'm using. Uh, copy, you know, black and white copies to make certain edges harder for the water that's in the background. Water in the foreground is blurry, which is kind of easy to paint once you get up and running. I'm using the Iwata um, Custom Micron and uh, side feed. And I will be using, if I have to, even the little French curve. Um, is really great for tiny little areas that I have to keep hard edge that um, just in case I need it so that's some of what I'm using I'm painting on clay board it's a five by seven uh, piece of ampersand clay board which is pretty much illustrate it's a what do you call it um, <clears throat> okay I'm having a brain freeze it's on like a masonite and uh, it's probably, it looks like it's about, I'm saying three sixteenths, maybe something like that. Probably says it on here somewhere. One eighth. Okay. <clears throat> One eighth panel. And it's uh, a great product that I've been, I've been painting on for a while. You can see some damage here. I'll bring this, I'm going to hook this up to the hose. Uh, okay. So. I have the Mac valve, which is why the air is not, you know, running, <laughs> draining the airbrush, the compressor. I'm using a Terry Hill silent air compressor. And uh, this has the Mac valve. So I just turn it on and that's the low rider trigger. And I got that from Drew Blair. And inside, uh, inside here is the spring has been replaced with the soft spring. You can get it from the Blair School of Realism. That's Drew Blair. And uh, yes, uh, I highly recommend it. It's a very quick action response. It's lower lower to the uh, body. So it's very, it's just very responsive and it's easier on the tendons and the hand and stuff. I, When I go back to my HP Plus, I don't have the soft spring. It's very stiff and... I actually sometimes stumble with this on the smaller paintings because I don't have the soft spring and um, I got to call and see if it's available for this model. But anyway, I like this gun to be used also for bigger areas or to have a second color, you know, so you don't dirty up the other airbrush. You can do lights and darks, such as have a white in the gun and then colors in the other gun. So anyway, let's get busy. Colors are already mixed. Um, I did this one on Facebook Live, so if anybody wants to see the process from part one and part two, uh, I'm going to show you a lot today of what I did to get this, which will help you. But uh, if you really want to just see it from a blank canvas, um, just go over to my Facebook page, into my um, photos, and go to albums. And then just look for videos and you'll scroll down. You might even find other videos from Facebook Live that you might enjoy watching, right? Um, trying to do more videos for YouTube and that's what I'm doing. So that's why I'm on here. So there should be some pretty interesting things we can do today with this as far as the out of focus. So this is like a shallow depth of field. The middle ground is very sharp focus right down to the mountains in the background, and then you have your pastel sunset. Then you have your blurry, out of focus foreground water. Okay, and that's what I'll demonstrate first. The touch up can be very easily fixed because I've used opaque paints. I've taken the transparent paints and mixed with white, and now I have opaque color, which is not see-through. It can cover lines, it can cover mistakes and things like that. So um, I don't want to get too close. I want to get right around there. All right. So let's uh, 
do a little demo of the blurry water. So I'll move the painting off to the side and I'll keep this here. This is just Bristol board. Instead of using a piece of clay board just for this demo, I thought I would just uh, use something like that. It's in stock and I've got it. It's plated. Um, this is more matted as I, this might be a photo paper, but it will all work. It's just, um, I wouldn't use it for scratching techniques and things like that. All right, so let me just pick a color here. Something that I can demonstrate this with. Something that I have a lot of <laughs> because the other color is mixed and ready to go to do the darker darks. As you can see, they're not done. And some details in the background that will give it that, you know, sharper in focus look. All right, so we'll move this over a little bit so I don't paint that. There's a smaller version I use for, sometimes if I'm doing a bigger painting, the smaller little guy can be a, a reference you guys can look at without blocking too much of the painting. But this is a pretty much a small, you know, five by seven photograph and a five by seven painting. So I'm gonna just kind of tape down the, photograph from fluttering. Just use a little piece of scrap tape there. And I only have to do this side. Okay. So I have my airbrush here and I have a little color in it. Uh, I guess I could take a piece of scrap paper just to start. Make sure my air pressure is where I want it and that kind of stuff. All right. So there we go. This is just, uh, I'm not going to paint the whole area. It's not necessary. I just want to show you out of focus waves. Treat them like back here, like mountains, just like that mountain there. Treat all these, all these here that are sharper, like a mountain, because that's what, that's what they actually look like. Okay. W waves are, you know, the reference picture is giving you the information you need. All right. So I'm just going to kind of work in this area here and just bring over, it's not gonna be the same color, it's not necessary just to show you this. So I'm just making that little shape right there. There's nothing here that's drawn out. This was drawn out lightly, but this is just a demo. And so I wanna keep it um, simple and I'm not caring about this being something <laughs> that I'm gonna keep for any reason because it's just a demo. When I do it on clay board, small pieces, I do keep them like last week or two weeks ago, whenever I did that video of the galaxy. Okay, so I'm just spraying out of focus. The airbrush already is out of focus, right? So right away, you can see the blur here. By the way, the, the, I'm not gonna put the pink in this one because um, it's in between the, the shapes and I'll just let white be there for now. Um, maybe, maybe if I mix it up later, if I have time, I don't want the video to be real long, but in there, I would paint that first. Okay. So I would <clears throat> have it mapped out and I would paint all the pink areas first, light to dark. And there's a lighter blue there and then mediums and different blues that are sprayed at different, uh, values. And then there's um, the intense intense darkness. So I'm gonna use the same color in the airbrush for the intense darkness, okay? So it's got just second coating. It's still out of focus though. If you, you know, you're not gonna try to change that, but what you want, whoops, kinda. Let's keep the edges blurry and then come down here and just sculpt out a little. Again, I'm using one color here. This is just so you guys can see how I treated this. And then down here, it kind of disappears. <clears throat> and then it just kind of has a gradation here. I'll do a light one first. Okay, then there's another dark area here. And again, I'm just winging it as far as 
This one's lower than that one, so I'm gonna come in here and just put this in and go in a little closer because it is a, it's a harder edge, but it's not a sharp edge. Transition of edges is what's gonna make you pay attention to the edges. Like, is this, you know, a little bit more of like a freehand edge that's out of focus? So I'll just put it in like that. Okay, and then lighter areas, like there's a little wisp there of color. And then here, this would be all the blurry areas. It's, you can get it done rather quickly, especially if you have it mapped out using feather strokes. There's one more out of focus. Well, a few more, but in general. So you skip here. There's going to be a light blue haze here. That's darker. There's going to be the pink. And then there's going to be this area here that is probably the last little area that's out of focus. The photographer was in the water and had his camera maybe, because down here it looks like the camera might even have like a piece of plastic that blocks the water and allows the camera to, you know, like a GoPro camera or something to see a little bit underwater and a little bit above. I'm not sure because I'd have to just look at it closer, but here you can kind of do a couple different value changes just to get that. And then just keep it blurry, pull the airbrush further away. And I guess it's a good day to paint. I'm sitting here in my home studio and uh, it's raining out really hard. It's a good day to paint especially with all the color correct lighting it makes makes for a better lit up room right than uh the darkness that sets in with the rings this is one of my baseball games i'm a mets fan so they're being canceled i'm in new jersey they're in new york and it's just really been rainy so anyway, over here, there's a little bit of, you play around with values. It's just a broad area, but it has sweeping gray, you know, gray, um, broad strokes. And then there's this area here that looks like where it might go underwater. It doesn't show up good in the photograph, but on the, the photograph from the, um, the laptop, when you look at it on the computer, it's very much beautiful water at this dividing line right here. It's, like, it's almost like goes underwater. But here, over here, you've got a little bit more of a special, a special shape right here. Notice the different values. And then over here, maybe a little more broad stroke. The airbrush is further away and spraying softly. So it's just a mixture of darks and lights and then I take another color, as you'll see me in the real video. This is just uh, a little watery too, to probably be trying to salvage paint, right? And it just seems to be a little bit too reduced with uh, water. Okay, so dark area, dark area here again, very dark. I'm using the same color in the real painting, I air dry it. In the real painting, I've used, um, dark Bahama color, a dark Bahama color, and uh, that kind of a thing. So what happens when you start getting up into the areas that are uh, hard edge, and I'm gonna be doing this on the uh, real painting, is you're gonna take your, your shields and line them up very accurately, uh, as I'll show you on the painting the mountain to the top stencil. And I can capture now some of the, I'll pin this down with my fingers and I'll spray the harder edge um, shapes. They are gonna make sense because even if they're still not dark enough, they're going to be crisp and sharper because the camera is Zooming in on that part. Let's just do that there. That wasn't a hard edge. I just sprayed that by accident. Okay, so I'm just going to deepen these a little bit. No details in this one. Just 
to show you the crisp against the soft. Okay, so there's the difference. As, as usually things are in focus up close, right? With the human eye or a movie, you see a movie and say there's a boat out here and the person's on, on a surfboard and they're going towards the boat or whatever. This usually is all in focus and that distance is out of focus. But with the, the, the zoom lens, you can pull in the, the zoom onto this part of the um, horizon, capturing a really nice, um, you know, in focus distance shot with the blur here. So just for the sake of, you know, argument as far as like this area not being pink, because I'm not concerned about that right now. Uh, the real painting has the pink in it. As you'll see here, it's already in it. So just put the pink in there first. In other words, this would just be a drawing. I'm just skipping that part. And then I'm just gonna, for the sake of tying this together, you would just take the same color Again, we're not doing the pink, so just imagine no sunset yet. So the water's gonna be just all different values of blues, sharps and sharp lines, dark lines, far away, mist over, tying it all together so that there is water everywhere, you know what I mean? And then the highlights would be already there. This can be darker here. Again, these edges are out of focus. It's very, this this one should have been blurry. And in the real picture it is. So I sprayed a little too low. That's out of focus right there. All right, so that'll give you at least uh, an idea of, you know, capturing the out of focus look. And then you can go in later and you can do things to this to make it all come together. Because like I said, this would get real dark. So I'm just using one color just to give you a sample. I think that's what helps the most. People really like the last video because I did something similar and it got it really uh, got a lot of views in a short period of time, which was really nice. And if you could remember, if you liked the video, to please click that you did like it, because that makes YouTube send it out to more, that's what I'm told, more people to see it. They have an algorithm, I guess, that they work with. And a comment, too, also, once in a while, helps the, uh, the YouTube channel grow. That's my goal. The more you guys help this grow by doing little things like that, it's in your, it's your, to your benefit, you know, because you will be seeing more videos. I'll be able to put more time. My goal is eventually, eventually to, to be monetized right now. Um, it's not, but that's okay. I'm just going to spray that back there. It's got probably pretty close to enough people. I think it's going to hit 1,800 today. It might even be 1,800 subscribers. If I do more lives on here instead of YouTube, um, Facebook, I'll probably get, I'll grow quicker that way. You know, the channel will grow. Okay, so there you go. Just tie it all in like that. And like I said, the whites and the darks, the lights and the darks, it all kind of, so it's really a fast painting. I mean, obviously we didn't do the detailing yet. It's very quick and blurry and hard edge. Think of mountains, okay? Think of all the things you need to see. It's right there, so you kind of try to mimic it. The super darks against the lighter blues and stuff. The highlights, which are, you know, Something that, just out of curiosity, I am going to take my eraser and just see if I can pick out a highlight here. I'm not sure on this paper how it will behave. Sorry about the camera. Yeah, a little bit. If I don't erase too hard, you can see a little, but it's kind of harsh. So white paint would do it, but you could see a little highlight. So that's what you, do, you would be doing. You could pick out areas and start 
using a controlled kind of uh, erasing by looking at things to give more punch, like this is where the sun is, so this would have highlights all the way through. But because it's paper, I'm not going to worry about it. It's just, you know. Okay, so there we have it as far as how we got to this point. Minus the sky. The sky is just gradation. I sprayed. I protected the bottom with frisket. And I just sprayed in. I think I started up here. I matched the color. Pretty much so. Um, and then from there, I sprayed down. And I had a gap here. And then I sprayed up with this color. Of course, I had to put that in and protect it. And then there's a little highlight going on where the sun starts to touch the top of the waves. Okay, and that's what this is. All this beautiful highlight reflection is the color of the sky. So, okay. Let's just do a little bit and see how we do. So the color I had in here, um, I could probably use it here. Let me try it. This is still out of focus. I do not want You know, I do not want a hard edge there. I want a soft edge. Okay, so it's a little darker. And now I want to switch over to the Bahama color. Try to touch that up. Hopefully, I can do that with this color. Okay, I got to clean out my lighter blue. I use the Iwata cleaning station. Okay, which I tore apart yesterday and put a new filter in and uh, cleaned out the, the jar. It was really, really getting bad. So it wasn't going to help me as much, right? It's good for you breathing, get rid of overspray. And after you blow the paint out, I take distilled water. I might, if I'm major cleaning, I might go into the color cup with a q-tip and then just spray that out okay that's out of there now all right so we're going to go to the darker bahama blue I'm still, even though this is a very dark mixture, I'm still going to be careful when I spray it, hopefully softly to, you know, not just lose all detail and stuff inside the shapes. Um, so we'll zoom in on the, this a little bit more and we'll move this over. And we're just gonna focus on that with the stencils. Okay, there's the stencil. Hopefully I'll be successful. Each painting has its risks of a mistake. And if you don't make a mistake, then you're a robot. <laughs> Once in a while, right? So I got a little trailing going on. So I gotta do something about that. Paint's coming out when I don't want it to. Pull it back a little. Reseed it and see how it behaves. That did it. Okay. I do like the handle on, so that I will put back on. I just feel comfortable with it on. Custom Micron CM SB side. Okay, so re the registration of this. I have a little piece of tape ready to go here so that I can line it up and not worry about it missing. So the registration would be, I gotta get both sides here and I can't, if I mess up, I'm going to be messing up the, what's already done. And I see already a little mistake on this one stencil, I gotta be careful, meaning I cut too much away. All right, so how about here? So 
just looking at it, make sure the bottom's lined up of that color. It looks good. The mountain looks good. It seems to be hitting it. Let me just shift it up a little bit more. There we go. So I got this side, but I got to go over a smidge. Probably right there. Okay, so I got that side. And it's raining out. Okay, so used to doing the lives, the live feeds, where at least people are typing in and saying something, you know, so feel, feel like you got company. Okay, so now this, I have to be very careful and bring that up there. This is where there's a mistake here, and that is not working out. So I got to be careful. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on, I might have to turn this stencil bit and do this area and then realign it. Plus, when I put the photograph on the copy machine, it was really curled from when I got it developed over at um, Walgreens. It was very curled and it made a distortion in the... Uh, photograph or the black and white. So I can just kind of pull that back. Look at that. It's very dark right here. And this is where that little shield can come in, the little French curve. So let me grab that. Um, where did I put that? There's a little bit of a, a line right here. So I got that hard edge there. See, a little bit of the other blue came out, even though I flushed it. All right, so here I see a line here, a hard edge. Just bouncing some color off the shield, getting a, a little bit of a ridge there. And then maybe a little triangular shape here. I got to get that down better, you know, pinned. Okay. A little triangle shape, and then it kind of goes off this way. Yeah. And grabbing colors from last week, it doesn't matter to me if there's a little more blue in the Bahama color, as long as it's dark, because it makes it for a pretty, you know, it makes a pretty uh, mixture of colors. It can kind of break away from the photograph a little and be, take artistic liberty and start to just, now do I need to go lower there? Let's see. Let me see the inside. Yeah, that's good there. Whoops, that ain't gonna help. There, that's gonna help. Pin it there. Tip dry. get this edge, but I want to make sure it's registered right. Like I said, some of this is off 
out of alignment here uh, because I don't know maybe the twistedness of the from the um, yeah so we'll just go there for a minute I'm just moving it myself Too much air pressure. The darkness in the middle here, so let me just kind of put that in, let some overspray around it. Kind of play around with lights and darks if I can. I'm going to try to capture some of these little shapes. They're just to give me a guide because they're very soft even though they're in the out of focus uh, sharper area they're still uh, pretty pretty soft. In that area. Just gonna go here just on this end of it and out here a little bit the top. I'm spraying mostly on the paper. All right, so notice I'm not using the stencils down at the bottom, even though they're cut out, I'm not using them. Okay, so we have definitely sharper. I see much more blue in here. I'm starting to get, I, I got that color going here and I need to take another color to that. All right, so let's see what the other stencil looks like. I have a couple cut out. Maybe this one will line up better. I blocked this because it was not right. And there we go. The, the, this is good for over here. Register it. Pull it in. Make sure that mountain hits right where the mountain is. Right there. There. And that should be my safety margin there as far as I got the mountain, then I got this right. Okay, so this is pretty dark out here, so I'm just gonna spray it in. Now there is a lighter thing going on in between there. I can come in with the white later. This is actually, here's that little triangle there. Let's see if I have it on one of the stencils. It might have fallen out, which means you cut and it, you lose pieces, you know. So let's see if I can get that triangular shape freehand right here. A little straighter there. side. I'm not showing you what I'm doing. I'm sorry, but I'm working right here. I'm not going to do the video over the piece of that. That would be a little shape in there. I can mist over this with water later. There's nice little dudes coming down here. Again, it's moving too far over. Okay, so the top, the sky at this point, if I can still salvage this, yeah, I think so. This is the frisket film that I can bring down onto the mountain. I'll get the mountain first. Offset, so I gotta shift it over to the left, drop it down. It should it should fit in there. Get stretched after a while. Whoops, lower, 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 lower. Okay, now we're gonna go on to that one. I'm kind of just making it go where it belongs. Now the sky's protected. 
some film. And I can see that this go a little lower, so I'll force it a little lower. I still see more. It's being stubborn. There we go. Okay, I'm seeing little uh, lines that, where am I looking now? Just seeing a couple of little baby things coming off here right after the highlight of this triangle. I'm seeing a little line right here. So I'll start on the frisk frisket and then I can walk it on. There might be one more here. I have to put a little highlight in there to help it show up. And then they go out into the lighter water. Um, it would help if I had more paint. I don't know what just happened there, but I got to tighten the, how it kind of did it itself. <laughs> but I'm going to just make sure by doing that, pushing it in. For now, I'll leave the handle off. All right. So where are we? We're right here, right off here. Got a little bit going on the film and go down into this little wave, darken it. And then this one. It's light in the middle, so I gotta be careful there. But this gets a little closer to this line, so I'll just do it again. There we go. So we got some lines in there that are going uphill. Here we have the same thing going on. Go up here and start it. Well, that isn't exactly what I wanted. I might be able to, I'll just use the white to fix that. This is very dark there, that's very dark here. Let's see if I have the right color for here. Okay, we're gonna zoom out a little bit and get right to the bottom, right there. Say if it was a transparent, it wouldn't cover this. So I'm gonna just kind of dust it in, dust it in, aim down, not to ruin all the pink. The pink kind of has a little thing around it right there. So it kind of ends like that. And for the most part, it's gone. Um, just gonna darken this one a little more. And this one. And I'm gonna look at that. There's a free, I'm not gonna do that free hand though. So do we have enough here to cut it out? I gotta line it up here. I'm not sure, but we can try it. Right there. 
the more I put these little soft shapes in, it might help. I won't let anything out. All right, so go off to the side paper and see how it's behaving. Out of focus shapes. It's a back and forth thing that I'm going to be doing too because the white, I have to go back in there and play around with highlights. These are kind of out of focus, so I gotta just go for it. A little dark there, but okay, so I'm gonna go for one more little shape right here. Now the shape is bigger than I wanted, but that's where the uh, good old uh, lighter color can come in. This has to go all the way off onto the tape. should do it okay and yeah we're coming out a little bit more so it looks kind of you know funky but takes time to to get this to be what you want I have a ledge here, I'll show you the ledge, that is giving me a little problem with my hands. So I probably should have taped, it, taped this up higher, but having said that, I'll just go for that one more time. There we go. And I'll use the white to help me get back where I need to go. I'm just gonna take the other blue right now, clean this out. Sometimes you have a painting where you where you want it, but you still have to put the darks in, and then all of a sudden you get a little too dark, and it starts to look different. And I'm seeing that, but I'm not. I know that if I sit back and stare at this after I'm done, and I go in with my white in the gun, I will be fine. 
making it, you know, the way I need it. So, go a little bit longer here. Wow, an hour video, huh? Almost. All right. So what do I need? I need that lighter blue. Okay, this is a lighter blue that I'm going to kind of mist on here. And that quiets that down. Just mist right over that a little bit. Not that back part, but the front part. And right here, I'm going to mist over that. Knock that back a little bit. Got a little too dark out there. Okay. And over here, I'm going to knock this back where it touched up. You do get a blue color shift, but it's a blue painting. <laughs> so I can control that later. Color shift is basically when, you know, you spray over a of color, you start seeing other things that blues and stuff. Blue, that so shouldn't be there. So for now, let's just get this frisk it off here because it doesn't allow you to see a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to just do one more thing. Doesn't mean I'm not going to work on the video later. Uh, the video, the painting. I will. But I'm going to tie together some of the softness that I've, that I've kind of lost a little bit. It still looks pretty good, but it kind of needs a little help with some of the areas that got a little dark. Okay, so I'm going to mix up a little white here. Oops. Shook that baby and it was yeah, coming out all over the place, up the lid. Okay, one more thing. Offset this white. Now I hear high winds, higher winds at least. see what I can do with some white just to soften it and then we'll call it a video and I will fine tune it and detail it out when I'm not you know when I'm done here maybe today I'm not sure but it's, it's not gonna be a video it's gonna be me working on the painting afterwards which I do on all of them all of them just about I don't you always go back and fine tune it okay so we've got, I'll probably re, I'll probably remix the lighter color, the, uh, the mixture there, that would be the pinkish color. And I'm going to cut through here and bring this back. So I'm going to cut through here, right here, separating those two guys and go above that very carefully. Making this more than it should be. It's kind of, it's straighter actually, so I should cut it off this way. Okay, now I'm gonna look at it. The separation in here. Other strokes. 
soft daggers, right? Shape that a little bit more pointed. I can go back in there. I'm going to dust over a little bit because I'm going to put another blue on that. Okay, so what do we got here? We got the lower one highlight right in here. Kind of bright there. So I guess the demo I was doing, this would be, I didn't think I was going to be doing this part in here. This would be playing around with all the different lights and highlights. Okay. I'm just reshaping things that I see that I, and I could put the pink right back down on top of these things. I'll zoom in a little more. I'm sorry, guys, but sometimes that would be probably good right there. All right, a little more highlight here. Just a whisper. Change the shape of this thing here a little bit too. And here. If I see pink in there, I'll put it in. You know, this could be highlighted stronger. Back in here. And it starts melting and coming together. Yeah, I'll probably mix up that red again. So I'll put this white right over it and get things to be more corrected. There's a very strong highlight right here from the sun. And then this is light to dark, so I'll break this up right in the middle. So some of the shapes that I wasn't happy with, I'm reworking them. And I am happy with them now. When it first go goes array a little bit on you, and you're making a video, you know, I have to remember that I could do this to it, so to keep my, you know, self from getting upset or something. Or I'm making the video and I'm losing it. <laughs> this is dirty. The pink got a little dirty, so I'll just lighten, mist over it, and put it back in on top of it. Um, and in here, it attaches. If you look at it right there, it attaches to this shape right there. Might have to pump that up a little more, but that's all right. Probably painting right onto the picture. Again, the pink's gonna go back in and we're gonna soften the edge of that by just coming across very lightly and mist it out a little bit right there. It's still going into the water. And then in here, you could kind of see some of the stuff I want to do, the little details. Where we're going to go in on this area. Just a little bit. And then I'll put light blue over it. So we got the hard edges, but we lost some of the defining shapes. with that too much. Highlight in here still. Air on. Turn the air down real low. There we go. In here. Got to get that tip dry because the opaque paint will really ruin it. 
So I'm looking for a few little shapes in here that I kind of put in, but there's not enough separation going on to show anything. That's really nice. And then this has its water area up here. Here. Highlights. Right there. This is a strong highlight. So maybe I could use the big shield and end the video on this final highlight which is coming off of, so I'll bring this over all the way, right here, right there. I'm gonna put it back in. It's kind of hard edged a little bit. So let's see if I can help it along here with this shape. Nope, nope, I need a bigger, longer shape. <laughs> kind of funny to bring out a shield that's called the big shield but I need that curve. I mean, this is gigantic, right? Especially when I got zoomed in, but I need it. So we're gonna have to get this to find its shape right there. Okay, now I've got a beautiful shield. I can spray right off the shield a little bit right there. And then I can come back in the other way with the dark color and make that highlight pop. Okay. We have a thunderstorm going on. Mm -hmm. Reference picture just blew away. This is no longer protected. I'm going to take the smaller shield. that along a little bit. There we go. And in here. So some of the things you saw me losing with the dark, it's just a back and forth kind of thing. I lost that a little bit, so I'll just put it back in. And in here, we'll end it on this one. Okay, guys, uh, right here. That looks good. Maybe a little smaller. So I'll cut this out a little bit more. Let's see, go like this take some of that off. That's good. And I could make this a little bit further away right here. I can't stop guys, I do this all the time. So I'll unzoom and remember the first part of the lesson, we did a little bit of the out of focus part of the water. Okay, that was just for to show you how I went about it. We used some cutout stencils to get the harder edges, which I'm still gonna go back in and play around with till I, till I get all that detail that I, I like to see in the photograph but it, it can't be done so simply, but at least you get the idea. And then what I, what I do sometimes, I'll tell you, we're gonna come up on the hour, so I'll just show you, clean up the one side here a little bit. So I just take a piece of, because remember there's white tape on the edge. This just kind of shows you the separation of the water by cleaning it up a little bit with Windex. I do it a lot just to see my painting, to see. Sometimes you can damage, you gotta be careful, you know, but 
the blue tape is pushed down pretty good. I'm just taking off the ook, <laughs> the ooky ook, little kid talk. Okay, and now I'll dry that, actually with a paper towel, so it doesn't leak. Pull down low and flat. Because I probably should have put the, this on my jeans and wore off some of the glue, but that's good. And I'm going to just hit this over here a little bit to get that from being so. So I can put another color down at the bottom. That will kind of look nice. Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm doing this. Just picture a little more of that, just a little bit, just a little bit more of that color of the sky in back in here, which I have to mix and tweaking these edges. Really, the, the work is all in here now that I have to kind of finish. I'll darken the mountain. I'll fool around with the brightness of the white spot of the sun and just, yeah, change, darken that mountain back there. I'm calling it the mountain. The waves act like mountains. Darken that one. And that's it, you know, just touch-ups. So thanks for checking it out. And I'll see you soon on another video. Uh, share, if you like it, share it to another artist. Tell a friend. Subscribe to the channel. And again, hitting the like button if you like it. And that only sends it out into YouTube world more. More people will see it. The channel will grow. All right, so thanks again for, you know, checking this out, and I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, and God bless you guys, and yeah, go paint. Take care, guys.